afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I just hurt my finger. Son of a biscuit. Um, so Sammy J and I did a sugar project where we put different amounts of sugar in our um, uh, basic concrete composite, and boom! There's the information on the mix design. That's that first sheet that I gave you. So Haley was gracious enough to put all this together. Everybody give it up to Haley. She's amazing. She is an amazing addition to our team. And she's about to take one of her certifications in what? Right. In what? Oh, green roads. Green roads. She's going to be painting roads green. And to paint roads green, you need to be certified in using a very specific paint brush. And really small. Really tight nap, if you will. She has to go to Canada to do it. They're having poutine, vegetarian poutine, Woo! and they're going to learn how to paint roads green. Celadon green, a very specific type of green. So that's not true. That's not true. She'll talk to you more about that. I've got to talk to you about this sugar project. So I've got the data set in front of me, and what we predicted was going to happen, and ding, here's this little chart of what Sammy and I put together. We predicted that at a certain point, um, you know, we're going to be adding sugar, it's going to kill hydration. With a little bit of sugar, it's going to put the concrete to sleep, but then that strength would come back. At a certain point, we were going to add too much, and it was going to put that concrete to sleep. And what we were hoping to do is put enough of that sugar in there that the sugar would have the reverse effect. It would start acting like an accelerator. So let's look at that data. The first thing that we're going to look at here is our fresh properties, our slump, our unit weight and temperature. And when we started putting our sugar in, we started getting a more flowable concrete up to a certain point. No, I'm sorry. We just went from 4.6 all the way up to 9.1, 12.8, and then just killed it at 13.2. So really creating a more flowable mix. And we do often see that not with hydration stabilizers, but more so with retarders. And that's what a, a sugar can be considered. Um, the immediate temperature, we didn't see any significant change. It went from 64 to actually 64 and a half when we added more sugar to it. Um, so no real change. And then when we added our, um, our, our sugar, we did see a change in the unit weight. And that just could have been from containing the water or maybe creating some air mechanically or maybe even some chemical air. Uh, maybe the stickiness of the sugar with the, the salts in the cement pour solution. Um, but it did drop, not significantly, but it definitely did drop noticeably. All right, um, after that, let's go over to the semi-adiabatic temperature uh, test. Is where we're looking at our temperature over 24 hours. I actually think it was 48 hours that we looked over this temperature. And the reference is that traditional curve that we're looking for, where we're looking for that um, uh, we miss that mixing stage, that first stage of cement hydration. We go straight to stage two, which is that dormancy period where the concrete falls asleep. Then we have our acceleration where we gain in our temperature and our deceleration. And then our plateau where we reach this densification stage. And what we see with the reference is this beautiful shaped curve. Once we start adding the sugar, uh, that curve changes tremendously. In our lowest dosage, you see that pink curve, and that might change. What's the matter? Uh, that pink curve, or that, that sugar one curve, I should say, we're seeing a reduction in temperature, but it kicks off later on. Now, when we connect that to the strengths, our 24-hour strengths for our reference were uh, 6,200, excuse me, just below 6,300 PSI, while our sugar one, it was just below 2,000 PSI. So our concrete was definitely asleep. Now, we went sugar three, and sh or sugar two and sugar three, we went down to 172 PSI and 210, where we really just put this concrete to sleep. Now, with our lowest dosage, we can see at that tail end, we're starting to regain some of that temperature. Not only do we see that in our 24-hour strength, but we also see that in our seven and 28-day strength, where Sammy and I predicted that strength would be skyrocketing in flight. When you compare it to the reference, we are 700 PSI above the reference at 7-day, and at 28-day, we're another 700 PSI above the reference. That being said, we included those higher amounts of sugar. Again, we changed up the electronegative potential, the hydration kinetics so much 
that the concrete really never recovered. And instead of getting to a rock-like phase, it went to more like a, a soft poop phase, or maybe a hard poop phase but not something that we can really build with. So when people tell you to throw uh, sugar into the back of your concrete truck, just be a little wary of that. Uh, too much sugar is easy to make happen. Let's do the math real quick. Um, we did, so 56 pounds was sugar dosage number three, right? 56 pounds. Sugar dosage number one was 5.6 pounds. That's per cubic yard. Mm -hmm. So if you put 5.6 pounds of sugar per cubic yard, you're going to put that stuff to sleep for 24 hours, but it will regain its strength. You go above that, we went to, right, 56, but in between 5.6 and 56, what did we have? Was it half of it, or was it an order of magnitude? Hold on a second. Okay, I'm sorry. So we did 56 was sugar dosage number 3. 28.3 was sugar dosage number 2. And then sugar dosage number 1 was 2.8 pounds. So going to 5 pounds, 10 pounds per cubic yard, you're going to start getting a little bit nervous that you're not going to start waking that concrete up. But at 2.8 pounds, what we found is after 24 hours, you can still wake that concrete back up. Okay, hope you learned something. Let me know if you got any concrete questions, any concrete concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell,